I'm gonna take us off here. Uh, as everybody knows, today is like a pretty sweet day in the Dow because we're hitting a major, major, major V2 milestone. Uh, you no know, V2 season is in route, uh, but today we're launching the client and we're also launching a clean dashboard update that supports multi-application staking. Um, at today's call, there's basically going to be like major alpha on both of those through two demos. Um, one demo from the Keep contributor side, that would be a, a design demo on the multi-application flow on the dashboard. And the other one coming from our node expert in the DAO, or one of our node experts, uh, being Victor, who's going to walk through some of the some of the client details. Uh, before any of that happens, we're gonna we have uh, DVK here, Doug, who's going to give you guys sort of a, a quick update on the state of V2 and add some context to all the really exciting things that are that are happening today and in the future with the product. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. All right, so I'll just start. Um, so, not right in the two hours. Um, I've been informed all of the TBDC client con contracts have been built, audited, fixed, and they will be fully deployed to mainnet. They've been running on testnet for about a month, I think. Um, we've just been stabilizing the client, making sure the node works, getting everything ready. Um, but yeah, in two hours, everything will be live. You'll see some demos coming up later on how to use and interact with the with the new applications, authorize your stake, and all things like that. But in T minus two hours, everything will be up and live. Um, it's been a lot, a lot of work getting here. Um, you can start uh, with the. I th I'm. I think the. Documentation is already live, but at least everything that will go up, including a blog post and, and all the information that you need to start working by yourself or with a staking provider to authorize and stake into the new TBTC v2 application um, will be also provided as well. So you can stake yourself, work with a staking provider. All that information is going to be on the dashboard, in the blog posts, and all the information that's shared in Discord. But you should know that you, in order to start earning rewards for TBTC, you'll have to authorize both uh, applications. So it comes as a package. There's a TBTC application and a random beaconing application, and they both work together uh, to, to run the actual TBTC v2 bridge. So you need to run both in order to start earning rewards. Um, the client code is still under development and will be for the foreseeable future. Our name for this is ChaosNet. We'll be running ChaosNet until we're fully confident. You can think of it as a beta, until we're fully confident that it's, it's stable and um, we're confident it can scale and accept new stakers in a stable and robust way. There's all sorts of, of kind of milestones we're working towards. But right now, you can start staking, um, generating random numbers with random beacon, and participating in the actual like beginning of the protocol as we slowly build it out. There'll be, like I said, there'll be directions for how to stake and links to the binaries for running a node in the Discord, um, and and basically everything you need to get started. But we're starting off um, at the very like foundational level, making wallets that you can deposit Bitcoin into, but you can't quite de deposit Bitcoin into. So minting won't be live. It will just be uh, participating, generating random numbers and creating wallets. Uh, also in about two hours, we'll be la launching the new uh, dashboard interaction for staking. So if you have staked T, you can authorize it into the new applications now. You can, um, uh, something to know about staking into new applications you if you have let's say you just for example sake you have a million staked t you can authorize the same million into every single one of the applications so pre tbdc and random beacon you don't have to split it up 
uh, individually and allocate it chunk by chunk into each application. All your stake can be authorized 100% or 50% or 0% into all of them. It's up to you. Um, this is something that's a little, I think, counterintuitive. It's explained very well on our dashboard, but um, I think in the, in the demos, you'll be able to see more about what exactly that means. Um, so that's kind of the high level information about what we've achieved, what's launching in the next couple hours and things like that. I just want to take a moment also to recognize the significant effort of the Keep team to get us to where we are right now, the DAO and Community Guild members, and New Cypher as well, for everybody for their tireless support to get us merged and then also get this application running um, together. It's, it's not just Keep, it's not just New Cypher, it's all of us kind of working together to get this very thing out. And it's been um, a lot of work, but the patience has, I think, been rewarded because today, in two hours, will launch the most transparent, scalable, secure, private, and robust bridge BTC ever built. You will have all the convenience of WBTC, but you won't have to relinquish any of your sovereignty or ownership over your assets. It's a huge achievement. It's been a lot of work by some of the best protocol designers, I think, in the world. And um, it's really amazing to see it finally, finally get out there and be launched. Um, in terms of just high-level timeline, I spoke about the chaos net. Uh, there's no timeline for this to, to chaos net to go into normal, normal net, I guess. Um, it's chaos net until we feel confident that everything's robust and working, working uh, fine. We're starting with the signing groups, like I said. Then we'll move on to minting, uh, minting TBTC, and then we'll move on to minting and unminting TBTC. Um, there's a lot of work from now until then. Uh, we're estimating the first minted TBDC to be in December, uh, or sorry, November. Um, but um, we'll see. You know, it, it really we're we're playing this by observing the network, seeing how things work out. It's a very very complex piece of code and engineering, and so um, obviously can't make hard promises along these deadlines since anything could come up. Uh, another thing to note about staking is there's a 45 day cooldown period. So if you staked, you are an aligned economically with the network for at least 45 days. If you stake and then you unstake, uh, you can't claim your T back until 45 days later. This is for various security and um, uh, economic reasons crypto economic reasons, but uh, it's important to point out. And in all the blog posts and all the information we're re releasing, we're emphasizing uh, exactly this timeline. What does chaos net mean? What's going to happen next? Um, what are the milestones that we have to reach in order to, re to release the next milestone? Things like that. So that's all coming out soon. But... Uh, like I said, we're going to have some alpha dropped, like Will said as well. And Sasha, I believe, is next with a little dashboard walkthrough. I don't know if we wanted to take some questions for first before the dashboard walkthrough, but uh, that's all I have to say. I'm happy to wait for the questions, if there are any. Yeah, really well said, Doug. So, uh, yeah, at this point, if you have a question, I mean, feel free to unmute and ask. We always want these calls to be open and collaborative. Or alternatively, you can drop them in the Hangout to text channel on the side of the uh, on the side of Discord. I see one, which is where will node creation docs and guides be shared? Uh, I, the, the answer to that is all over the place. Um, but I think Victor is actually going to even be talking a bit more about that uh, at the end of this call. Yeah, that's right. Um, currently, they're living at docs.threshold.network. Hey, Doug, it's John Packhell. Super exciting. Uh, I agree, very complex, even more so than just one team you know, releasing something revolutionary. It's, it's multiple groups. Um, you mentioned staking providers. Um, there was a mention last week that 
Bison Trails Coinbase Cloud is not ready yet. Um, uh, can you let us know which staking providers are ready so that um, those of us who need a staking provider can take part in, in rewards, uh, as well as if you know when Coinbase plans to be ready? I can answer that. So, uh, okay, thanks, Will. Yeah, I can take that one. So uh, first off, one important thing is that the council decided on a reward schedule where anybody who meets the requirement by October 17th is eligible for the full month of October for rewards uh, on the V2 side of the split, which means that there's a grace period, which is good for everybody. So people that are going to be setting up their nodes and operating them by themselves are going to be able to do that starting today. Uh, we, I'm expecting that there's going to be at least two staking providers ready um, within the week, we think. That's not final information, but there is going to there is going to be like a, a little bit of time where staking providers are need to set up and get ready to start accepting customers from from uh, our community and, and our DAO. So we will make sure that as soon as we have confirmation from staking providers that they're ready after they get uh, you know at least a couple of days to get set up, we'll share it with everybody in the DAO and and you'll know. So I think uh, that. There will be multiple options before the the October seventeenth deadline is hit, but we'll communicate that once we know for sure. And right now, we're we're talking with our staking providers, partners, in in the background to make sure that there are options for everybody. Okay, great, thanks. So the expectation is that at least two will be able to take even new customers and get them set up by the seventeenth, or do we know? That is the expectation. Two or three, yeah, yeah, that's the expectation exactly. But that's not one hundred percent confirmed. So we're waiting for that to be one hundred percent confirmed before we share that and give people the options that they need. Great, thanks. Okay, does anybody else have a question on that? That was a lot of good info. Just a reminder that that will be re-synthesized and shared throughout the the comms and the blog posts. Um, and even in the dashboard itself later today. Uh, if there aren't any questions, then we can pass it over to Sasha and Liz. Okay, let me start my screen share so I can make sure that everybody can see. Um, I just wanna let you know that today's demo is on testnet and the DAP is still in the polishing phase. So there may be some things that I will flag you that they will be changed, but uh, mostly everything works. I will be demoing you a user scenario uh, in which I am a new staker. Uh, so basically I have already connected uh, my wallet to the DAP. I will go to start staking and because I, I am a very new user, I don't know how to do anything and uh, to go around, I will just click on how it works to get myself familiarized. So here uh, the dashboard is telling me what is it about the threshold stakes, what are the new threshold stakes, what are the legacy stakes, um, which are basically the stakes for people who used to have keep stakes and new cipher stakes. I can learn about the staking actions that I have to take, about the addresses, what are the provider addresses, right. what are the beneficiary and authorizer addresses, and also I can learn about the authorizing of the application. So basically, uh, the dashboard is explaining to me uh, that my stake is just like a bag and uh, all of the applications that I'm authorizing can use the same bag in which I have my tokens. And the percentage that uh, I authorize the applications to use from the stake, it's just like if you could imagine I am drawing the string around the bag's neck and if I am only authorizing random beacon to 40%, then the bag's neck will be uh, tighter 
and it can only take out of the bag 40% of my tokens. Um, I can also take note that the, I have a deauthorization timeline and there is, this is a two-step uh, action and I'm learning that after the initiation of the deauth, I have a 45-day cooldown. I can also learn more about each staking application, the TBTC, the random beacon. I should also have the PRE here. I didn't, yes, I do have the PRE. And each of the applications have a little checklist that I can skim and scan and understand what I need to do uh, in order to get rewards. I also have a very nice list of the staking providers, who of them are supporting all of the applications and which of them can support only PRE. And then, because I got myself familiarized, I will start staking. Here I read that I can, I have the minimum stake of 40,000 and I will decide to stake 500,000. I'm hitting new stake and then the dashboard is communicating to me that first of all, I need to run a node. So if I'm not aware and I need to check more, I can now uh, drop off, read more about the node. But because I have all, I'm already aware that I need to do that, uh, I'm looking at the timeline and I can see that uh, I need to stake the tokens and provide some addresses. I need to authorize the apps in order to uh, earn rewards. And then the third step and the last one, it will be for me to configure my node or just because I'm not a technical person, uh, get help from, the staking, from a staking provider. So I hit continue. And now the application has already pre-filled for me the provider address, the beneficiary and the authorizer uh, addresses with, my, uh, with the address that I have connected. So the provider address will be the one that uh, is useful. I could take it from the staking provider or is the one that will be helpful for me in running the node, the beneficiary address, is the address where the rewards will be sent. And then the authorizer address is the address that has the power to authorize in between the applications. So I will go with uh, these addresses. And then I have a nice recap. I'm told what are the addresses that I have provided, what's the staking, staked amount, and then I can actually make the deposit into the staking contract. So because we're on Gurley and I'm away on Gurley and everything will work super fast, uh, we don't have to wait a million years for the transaction to be mined, hopefully. Indeed, we had it. We didn't. Uh, needn't. Okay, I'm confirming the second um, transaction, which is the confirmation of the deposit. The first one was uh, the approval for the staking contract to interact with my funds. And now we're waiting for the transaction to be mined soon. Okay. It was mined and here we are. My deposit was successful. I have staked 500,000 T. I can see all of my addresses. Um, and now the next thing I need to do, because I would like to get uh, to, to earn rewards, is to authorize the application. So basically I can authorize uh, the applications to use 100% of my stake and I can change this amount later by increasing or decreasing and you will see that decreasing uh, has this different rule in which 
I will need to wait for 45 days cooldown. Uh, and the last step will be setting up the node. So I'm going to authorize my applications. Um, and as Doug was mentioning earlier, also the application, uh, the DAP is telling me that TBTC and Random Beacon, it has a rewards bundle. So basically I need to uh, authorize both of them in order to get rewards. I will authorize my uh, all of both of the application with my maximum stake amount. Uh, the application is telling me that I have uh, I am about to take this action. If by any chance I have misclicked or I changed my mind, I can hit on dismiss and change it back. Uh, but I have my mindset. I will authorize everything. And each authorization will be one transaction per application. So now, because I am uh, authorizing TBTC and Random Beacon, I will need to uh, confirm two transactions. So each authorization per uh, application is one transaction. So that was the first transaction for my TBTC app. Now I am confirming the second transaction for the Random Beacon app. And soon will be mined. Okay, lovely and successful. So I have authorized the random beacon and the TBTC, and I can see I, uh, the amount that I have authorized the apps, the fact that this means 100% of my stake, and I can authorize more apps. I maybe I don't in this particular case, I don't need to authorize anything anymore. The PRE application doesn't require authorization. It will be uh, authorized as 100% as a default state. And the next thing I need to do is to set up a node. So, um, because I will run the node myself in this uh, super optimistic scenario, uh, I will close this and if you, as you can see, something happened to the dashboard, things have changed. So I have now in my your stake part of the dashboard, I can see the staking card with my applications authorized and the percentage is written here of how much I have authorized each authorization and because my um, provider address coincides with uh, the wallet address and I will be running my own node in order to have a better experience in the CLI and a better support for my hardware wallet, I will be required to map my operator address, my staking provider address to my operator address. Now the operator address uh, has been provided uh, by the node for me through the CLI. Now we have skipped that, but I'm sure Victor will give you more uh, information about it. So now because I, I really want to use my hardware wallet, uh, I will start mapping my address. Um, let's take a random. Um, a random operator address. Uh, okay, and as you can see, uh, the dashboard is telling me what I was already uh, telling you as well about the operator address and that 
uh, the address is generated, what, what also what's an operator address, and this is the address generated during the client setup and used by the client software. And I'm aware of this. I can read that this will require two transactions because I am mapping the same address for the TBTC and random beacon application. So I will map my address and apparently I have already mapped this guy. I need another random uh, address. Okay, wait for it. We also experience the errors. So now, there you go. This is a good operator address. Um, the application is doing a little recap, like an error prevention. If I have misclicked anything or I wasn't sure I wanted to use that uh, operator address, or I don't know, I have many nodes and I have pasted the wrong thing. I can double check now and I can see I'm about to map the operator address for the TBTC app and the Revendom Beacon app. So I'm okay with everything. Everything is right. I'm mapping the addresses, and as I remember, I will need to um, confirm for two transactions because each mapping for each application is one transaction. So I'm doing this. We're waiting. Hopefully, the girly miners are there working. So my first mapping was successful, and now I'm confirming my second mapping. And soon we will have it as well, successful in mind. Perfect. So I have successfully mapped both of my operator addresses. I can check both of the transactions. And here we are. I'm checking my uh, staking card and I can see that uh, my applications are up and running. I did that, but uh, this, is a, this is an error nose label. This should tell me more that I need to run uh, nodes in order to earn rewards. So for now, I don't have my nodes set up, and this is what my uh, this is this is what the dashboard is telling me. Um, also, if I want to um, decrease in, in in our case for now, uh, but if I wanted to increase or decrease or change my authorization for the application. I would go to the configure apps and then I can see that I have 100% for the TPTC, 100% for the random beacon. And hmm, now because I don't have anything left in my stake, I have authorized everything, I can decrease uh, by 200,000. and I will initiate the authorization. And now uh, the application is telling me that I'm about to initiate the decrease and this will be two, it's a two-step action. Uh, the first step is to initiate the, the deauthorization and then I need to wait for 45 days as a cooldown. And by, in this time, I will not be able to increase or decrease uh, the my my uh, application my authorization for the TBTC app. It will be a bit frozen in time uh, as a measure for uh, of security for the network, and I will initiate.
looks like um okay <laughs> so now i have successfully initiated my deauthorization uh i'm now during my cooldown period which has started just about now so um now i am i have a pending deauthorization and it should elapse in 45 days i think here it should elapse faster of course my wallet has been has been disconnected and yes it's still waiting anyway um if i were to have um the the cooldown time elapsed elapsed my next thing that i was needed to do was to confirm the deauthorization that would have triggered another okay uh another um modal flow in in which i would confirm the deauthorization i would have to confirm a transaction and then everything would set go back to normal just as here minus the deauthorized amount um yep so you guys can still top up your uh, stake that's no problem you can go here set your amount see and then top up the stake you can afterwards increase your authorization because you have increased your stake and so on and so forth here you can see the rewards that you have accrued the next emission for the rewards your staked portfolio the staking tvl and if you'd like to set up a new stake you can go here and uh, set up a new stake do you have any questions It looks great. Thank you for the demo, Sasha. Um, while anybody asks questions, I'll point out that there's an interesting convo going on in the, in the chat about the percents that users uh, authorize. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check it out. David and, and McLean had some good insight to share there. Um, another quick note is that the DAO is working on guides that explain this flow. So keep an eye out for that. And also the DAO has spawned up a really good system for internal support. So if you need help with uh, with any of this, you know, at any time, feel free to drop into Discord uh, and ask questions and somebody, a special contributor will, will get to you um, and be there to help you out. And by the way, here, uh, it should appear as well, PRE, PRE app 100%. Uh, this would appear anytime so something is missing yeah i have a question about rewards uh do your your rewards compound or do you have to add them manually uh if if the rewards are auto compounding to the stake yes i think piotr has uh has better knowledge if he's uh, here. No, no, they do not. If you want uh, to top up, you need to do it yourself. So you need to claim the rewards and then execute a top up. Okay. And they go out monthly in, in a different section of the dashboard. There's a countdown. Oh, actually, it says right there next next mission in the yeah. card in the, in the top right. So you'll know when it when they go out. But the rewards are accruing, so you don't need to. Um, withdraw them one by one. Awesome work, guys. Thank you. Very cool. Thanks, Vlad. Yeah, thanks for the demo, Sasha. It's really exciting to see. Um, so in the example, you it looked like you staked, and then you would need to... Um, set up nodes. So would the same thing apply for people staking with the staking provider to the earlier discussion? Like, could I go in and get tokens staked, 
And then when the staking provider is ready and online, um, they'll connect and rewards will start. Or do I need, I think I need at least a provider address from them, right? Yeah, you, you'll need the provider address from them. Uh, they will give you this provider address and then you can start staking. Uh, and afterwards, they can uh, uh, come on the dashboard, connect with the provider address, and then map uh, the the provider address to the node operator. This is will this will be handled by them since uh, you're uh, you you have this provider address from them. So you can go. Um, stake, deposit into the staking contract, authorize uh, the applications that, that you want, uh, but you must know that the provider address should be uh, provided by right. the staking providers uh, because, uh, as earlier I was uh, showing, uh, there, is, there is a note in which uh, we're trying to warn the users that uh, the addresses that you're inputting, the provider address, the beneficiary, the authorizer, cannot be changed afterwards, also as a measure of security. Right. Yeah, and I like all the additional um, explanation and notes. Uh, we had seen a, a preview a while back that looked good, but it looks like there's a lot more information now, which is super helpful. I love how the dashboard's laid out. So you can really read through, get an idea, and then go through the process. Thank you. It was a team effort, and we put our heads together to make everything better for the user. Using uh, user experience interviews. I can see you put those to work, which is great. Of course, and I will keep on inviting you, and I will <laughs> keep on uh, asking our community members and everyone to participate because all of the insights that you're providing are pure gold for us and they're so important to uh, hear you and help us shape up the products to answer your needs. Okay, Very so true. if... If if there aren't any any questions, uh, I will stop the stream, and I will give the microphone to Victor. Thanks, Sasha. Nice nice dashboard. I love it. Um, I'm going to share my screen. The dogs are living at docs.threshold.network. They're nestled mm -hmm. under the Threshold applications and then TBTC version 2 client setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the docs briefly and then touch on mm -hmm. some of the more abstract parts of the node setup. And then I'll launch the client so we can see what that looks like. And if there's any questions at any point in time, feel free to interrupt. And as long as they don't get too out of hand time-wise, I will try to do my best to answer them. Um, so basically, you do definitely need a machine that's online 24 hours a day to maintain um, network connectivity. And so there's some important considerations here. Recommended machine types. That's all stuff you can read on your own. Um, the, net, the node does require an Ethereum API. So I would probably go with Alchemy and Fear or Anchor versus running your own Geth node unless you're a real glutton for punishment. Um, so then the first thing we're going to need is what Sasha mm -hmm. talked about is the operator account that is created with um, Geth. And so the command's right here. And let's see. Can you guys see my console? I don't think so. No, no, we cannot. We can only see the Let me share. Box. Okay, share my screen. Okay. So that is the console for my demo node. And paste the command from the docs. So it's going to ask for a password. 
that is the password that's going to encrypt your key store. So there's some hints there. Um, try to avoid passwords that use um, ambiguous characters like commas, apostrophes, quotation marks, and stuff like that. Um, you should probably avoid the dollar sign as well, if possible. And obviously you want a strong password. So it's not going to show you the password. I'm just pasting it in here. And then it's going to do its thing. And this is what it spits out to the public address here, the public key. This right here, that is going to be your operator address that Sasha spoke of. That you need to map in the dashboard. So let's switch back to the docs. Anybody see the docs again? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Thing. You will need to fund your operator account. Um, I'm not 100% sure how much it's going to use. Um, that's probably a question that um, Piotr or Kuba can answer better. But I think uh, initially, probably a quarter of an ETH or a half an ETH is probably a safe bet. And you just want to man monitor that because you know it will not work without ETH. Um, also, do not forget to authorize the addresses. It will not start up without. And then we're going to move on to network configuration. That is all here. Um, so you have two main ports that need to be opened um, on your firewall. Port 39.19, that's the main port for the NAP application. And then the status port 9601, those definitely have to be open. And the status port has to be accessible for reward allocation. And then there's some configuration steps um, that you should really carefully review this the whole document, but I would review it before I got started. And this is what all makes a lot more sense when you read it, but basically you want to share your public IP address of your machine with the network so other nodes can discover you. That's what the announced addresses does. And then the next step would be the application authorization, which is what Sasha just went over in the dashboard. So I'm going to skip over that. Um, then this is probably one of the most important aspects of documentation, the data storage. It is of critical importance that this is permanent storage and that it's backed up periodically, that you do not lose access or Otherwise, um, access to these directories that will um, yeah, result in slashing and other punishments if you do lose access to those. Um, yeah, so back, up, back those up periodically and make sure you keep a, a copy in a safe place. Then we're going to want to copy the um, operator account key file that we just created. And there's the instructions for how to copy that. Oh, I skipped over this. Um, this step here creates the folder structure for the client where it writes um, its files. And you will also move the operator key file to this uh, config directory here. And then let's move on to the next step in the Docker install. Um, so these, these docs are basically laid out to be ran in Docker. Um, I think. Doug mentioned that the binaries will be live in about two hours. And it's essentially the same thing, except you're downloading the binary and using the, the flags that I'll go over in a few minutes. Um, so you want to install Docker, make sure you have the latest version. And then you have a whole bunch of flags that you need to supply. And in order to make that somewhat easier, I wrote this bash script here. And... Basically, you want to copy this whole thing and place it in the file. And the instructions on how to do that are contained on this site. Basically, rather than supplying a whole bunch of complicated flags, you're um, supplying them in a document and then executing this document. And um, so we'll have our Ethereum API endpoint here. 
and the cop uh, operator key file name and the password. In this case, because it's on the testnet, my staking provider is a key file. In your case, you probably will not need these two because, um, I'm, I'm sorry, no, you will need these two. Definitely need those. Sorry, I got confused there for a moment. This is the operator account key file and the password that we just created. Your public IP will go here. And then this section here configures your storage containers or directories for the container. And then I would be careful to not change anything below this docker line unless you really know what you're doing. And um, this right here, I want to point out the detached command that will suppress the console output so you will not see anything when you start up the client. Um, I disabled this command here. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, just so you can see what happens. And then you want to save and close the file and make it executable. That's this section right here. And then launch it with this. So with that, are there any questions at this point? And I'm kind of rushing through this. I just want to make sure we finish on time. I think you're doing great. Um, it's a lot of information for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I decided against going through it step by step because it will take too much time. Oh. And um, so we're going to launch it. And after the client starts up successfully, a few lines down, you will see something that looks similar to this. And when you see that, you are reasonably assured that your node is up and running. And you can always query the status port yourself. So, and without further ado, let me switch back to my console again. Okay, so I'm going to go to my configured directory for the client. And as you can see, I have my config directory, my keep.sh launch file, and the storage container, and some other things that I was using while I built this tutorial. So this is on the test net, so I'm not worried about sharing my configuration. So we have the Ethereum endpoint up here. The second line is my operator key file. The third line is the password to access that key file. And then the storage configuration. And then the run command here without the deta without detached flag. So I'm going, so after you have all that configured, make sure you save it, close it, and execute this, and with a little luck, it will start up, and here we go, and the client is off doing whatever it is it does under the hood. And here we go. It's generating primes, and it looks like it is in good shape to me. And with that, I'm going to hand the mic back over to Will. Thank you, guys. Amazing, Victor. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Yeah, thanks, Victor. Um, does anybody have any questions for Victor? I I've got one, Victor. If somebody needs help, setting up their client, where's a good place for them to, to reach out to you? Um, so we set up the um, support bot. Um, actually, let me go share my screen again. Here we go. So if you head down over to the application section, there's a support channel right here. I mean, you can ask a question any channel you'd like, um, and people will jump on and help you out. Um, this is basically, if you click this request support button here, this is a bot that we set up. Okay, I guess I can't do it. Um, 
But when you click this button, it opens a modal that gives you the option to create a ticket. And it um, actually it did work. I'm not sure why it did that. So what it does is it creates a private channel or a thread, drop me into it and alert me that someone needs help. And um, other moderators can see this and admins, but other than that, it's completely private and you can let me know you have an issue. The reason we set up like that is because every time somebody mentioned they had an issue, um, scammers would, not every time, but a lot of times, descend upon them and try to scam them out of the hard-earned tea. So, and plus it keeps things a little bit more organized. So this is the best place to ask questions. And I'm not always online 24 hours a day, obviously, but I will get to you as quickly as I can and answer your questions. Thanks, Will. Guys, awesome, awesome system of tickets. Uh, it's, uh, it will be very helpful for all of us. Thank you. Uh, I have a question about, uh, not, not, not about uh, applications, but about uh, slashing. Uh, could you share your thoughts about it? When will it appear and uh, so on? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I'm not sure I understood what you're asking. I'm sorry. Uh, I asked ask about uh, the great, uh, the flashing. Uh, could you share your thoughts about it? Uh, when will it appear and uh, so on? So, um, slashing, from my understanding, will go live pretty quickly. Um, it will only really kick in if you're offline for extended periods of time. And so the best way to guard against that is to use reliable hardware. And in my case, I'm using a DigitalOcean VPS, but you can really use anything you want. The only thing I would caution against is using certain um, VPS providers whose IPs have been blacklisted that might just cause you issues. But I digress. Um, I don't have a, a solid answer how soon slashing will go live, um, especially since we're in ChaosNet and not minting TBDC yet. Um, maybe Kuba or Piotr can answer that question. I can take this question. So for now, there's no slashing for this phase of the Chaos Net. The next phase is minting and then slashing will be enabled. Uh, there are different scenarios when you can be slashed. Uh, we are working on documentation improvements to cover all of them. But just to summarize, uh, if your node is offline uh, and there is a signing request, your node does not handle, then you can be slashed. Also, if node operators try to collude and um, uh, restore the private key material and then sign something with that private key material or not, they're not supposed to sign, uh, then also slashing is involved. Um, yeah, so mostly collusion that is provable and, um, and node uh, being not reliable. Uh, for now, the nodes are generating um, keys, uh, just as Doug described, so there is no uh, minting yet, but uh, that's that's basically the next step. Thank you, got it. Thanks. Thank you for taking that question, giving a more authoritative answer. Are there any further questions? We're almost at the top of the hour. And I do know people have other commitments. Yeah, it looks like John had a question in uh, the chat channel there on the side. Uh, you mentioned cr mention of critical data storage and backup as F had space issues with running an ETH node. I imagine the storage here is a lot less, but you know, guys can save lots of storage bandwidth. Um, bandwidth, I don't know exactly, but we should know more about that um, pretty soon. Um, I'm only familiar with the bandwidth capacity of a digital ocean node and the the no, the packages that will node and meet the minimum requirements will have more than enough bandwidth from what i've seen and as far as storage goes eth takes a ton of storage um it's not anywhere in, in that dimension um i, I believe uh, one gig of permanent storage is more than enough for the foreseeable future All right, thanks again for that, Victor. We're we're approaching the top of the hour, and uh, we want to remain respectful of everybody's time. So I think that this is a good 
place to stop. Uh, if you have any other questions, you know, drop them in Discord. We'll get to you. Um, we want questions. No question is a bad question because if you have a question, somebody else probably has the same one. So just ask. Um, great call today. Uh, really excited uh, for the client drop, the multi application staking flow on the dashboard, and all of the great stuff that we are shipping later today. Uh, like I said at the top, the two season is coming. It's really exciting. And keep an eye out for the official ping, which will probably drop from our man Hagen later today meaning that everything is live um, and we're we're good to go. So we just hit one o'clock. Uh, with that said, I think we're, we're done here. Um, thanks everyone for joining and we'll be around on Discord. Thanks, Will. Thanks, everybody. Okay, bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great, Great call. presenting today, Super guys. Awesome. Yes. Amazing presentation. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sasha.